talking about today is arm pressure pose. So one of the arm balances um, that I really like to do, um, it's something that I find personally much easier than crow pose. Um, I don't know how, but somehow there's a, a mindset difference. So in crow pose, that fact that you're going forward um, gives us that feeling of fear sometimes, doesn't it? With the forehead or the nose connecting to the ground. And the difference with arm balance pose or arm pressure pose rather, is that you're leaning backwards. Um, and what's really interesting when you're teaching this pose in class or both of the poses actually crow and arm pressure pose is half of the room will prefer to go forwards and half the people will be a little fearful of going backwards. Um, so I'm going to talk through some of the things that we need to do to prepare our bodies um, to get into the shape. Um, and then I'm going to talk you through different options of it. So let me just take a moment, check in and see who's here and say hello to everybody. Dara and Karis over here. Welcome guys. I've got Yeni, Faraz. Cool. Hi guys. Okay. So those of you who've been joining me for the last couple of weeks now, um, we've been looking at a series of arm balances. On week one, we started with crow pose. Um, last week, I talked about side crow pose. Um, and this time, we're going to be talking about arm pressure pose. So arm pressure pose, if I show you how it looks, first of all, um, then I'm going to work backwards from there. So I'm going to show you how it looks. And then I'm going to talk to you about what needs to be open in the body. Um, so how can you warm your body up to get into the shape? And then what needs to be strong once you're in the shape? So I'm very much focused on the anatomy of the poses when I'm preparing the body for a, a class. Um, and this is no different. Arm balances are no different to that. So let me just show you the shape itself, first of all. And it's one of those shapes where you're, you're getting down deep into the hip. So melasna is obviously a perfect warm up. So we'll come to that in a moment. And I'm lifting the bottom up like this to begin with. I'll remind you again in a moment how, it, how to get in. And the hands are really going behind. And I'm gonna use blocks because I have tender wrists today. And I'm sitting back and I'm just gonna show you the shape itself. Crossing of the ankles and you're looking forward. So it's a different setup to crow pose where you're bending and leaning your, yourself forwards. Um, which mentally, as I said before, seems to be a little bit terror terrifying for some people, myself included, okay? So what needs to be open to get into that shape, first of all? There's an element of um, openness through the adductor muscles, the inner thigh muscles here, to be able to get into this area um, of the groin. And then you saw when I'm getting into the shape, I'm trying to get the inside of my thigh as with all of the arm balances really, as far up the back of my arm as I can. So forward folding is gonna be a really, really helpful um, tool. And the good news is in every single sun salutation that we, we do, every um, preparatory sun salutation, without even trying to add in anything special, there are lots and lots of forward folds, okay? So no worries about how we can get nice and warm in the lower back and through the, the back of the legs here as well. This particular pose, this arm balance, um, is often seen as preparation for what we're going to look at next week, which is firefly pose. So when you're coming into the forward folds, it can be really helpful to think about lengthening um, the hamstrings. So that group of three muscles on the back of the legs as well. So have that in the back of your mind. Um, and then of course, hands are always going to be something that we're working on releasing. So I've talked to you guys a little bit the other week, I think it was in week one, about taking the hands nice and wide. So fingers as wide as you can. And um, actually Anna Forrest taught me this in one of her workshops that I did last year. And you're just gonna pull the thumb towards you, reaching the fingers as far away from each other as you can. And as you pull the thumb towards you, you're gonna take a really nice, slow, big breath. So really big inhale. And then a really big exhale, still reaching the fingers away from each other. And when that breath is finished, you move to the next finger and so on and so forth on both of the hands. And what that does is just release some of the pressure um, in the, the muscles in the forearm and then gives us a bit of space in between the, the ligaments and tendons of the hand as well. So that when we put the hands on the ground, there's a nice foundation um, 
there. So let's think about some shapes that we could include in our practice to help to get us nice and warm for this pose. First of all, I would suggest coming into bound angles. So soles of the feet together and an interlacing of the fingers. And we want the spine to always be nice and long when we're practicing these, these shapes. So as you exhale, you're going to keep the spine long and you're leaning into it. So it's not that rounding of the spine. It's a real lengthening of the spine. So the chest stays open, the collarbones broad. And what that does is just create a sense of engagement in the muscles in the upper back and a nice protection in the belly and the lower back here as well. And the core is gonna be a, a big factor in this shape. And when I talk about core, I'm meaning the front belly sideways and the length of the spine back. Okay, so not just the stomach muscles here. So this can be a really nice one to come into. Um, every time that you're in sun salutations and you come to a forward fold, just taking time to really draw the belly into the spine and lean yourself forward. And it's like you're drawing your, your crown of your head down towards the ground. And I want you to think about pushing down through the whole of the foot because what that does is give you more of a straight line to lift up through the tailbone, okay, through the sitting bones there. So really active in the belly, drawing yourself closer and closer. Um, and then you've also got, which is gonna help with the, the groin and the back of the legs a little, coming into a wide leg standing forward fold. So again, that idea of engagement in the belly. You're using the, the muscles on the front of the belly to get you closer to the legs, okay? And then pushing down through the toes so that you're engaging the quads as you find a bit of release through the back line of the body here, okay? So that would definitely feature for me. And then one that I really practice a lot to get into this shape, and I do it with the knee on the ground and in the full expression of the shape, is lizard pose. So I'll come into my low lunges, okay, my low crescents, but then I'll bring the hands down and, and I'll walk the foot over to the side of the mat and I'm really letting the knee drop out to the side here as well and I'm on the outer edge of my foot. Some of you, that's not going to feel so comfortable for you on the ankles, so if it doesn't suit you, just keep the foot down. But I want you to be thinking about trying to get down towards the ground using your your muscular strength rather than forcing, okay? So as you get down, you're gonna get down to forearms, blocks can come underneath, cushions can come underneath as well. And then once you get down there, and it might take you 10 breaths or so for the tissues to join in with that. I like to try to take one of the arms under as far as I can. So you remember the shape is with that leg coming up as high up the arm as you can. So this is really nice practice to just snuggle over and under the knee and the thigh. Okay, so taking some time. So that would be with my knee on the ground because my primary focus is connecting arm and leg at this point and just opening up slowly around the groin. And then you can take it to a, a different level when you come into this shape let's say from a high crescent, so coming up a little bit higher on your way back down to the mat, you can bring yourself down and then really get in nice and close and snuggle. And something that's quite nice to practice here then is pushing down through the hands and just lifting the foot up from the floor and squeezing the inside of the leg and arm together. So it's like you're pushing the outside of the arm into the leg and you're squeezing the inside um, of the thigh and the back of the, the knee into the arm as well. And you're pushing away with the left heel here. Okay, so practicing that on both sides can be really nice. Okay, and then just releasing. And every time you come into a crescent or a lone crescent, that can be a repetition um, that you're doing. So you're building up that practice again and again. And then one last thing just that came into my mind now. Coming into a, a downward facing dog and some of my 200 st our students will remember me doing this in class. Leg is lifting up. And then every time you're doing a core curl, which is bringing the knee to the nose, you're activating the, the same core muscles that you need for the practice. So that's perfect. But how about taking the knee as high up the arm here as you can and practicing to squeeze in and maybe even coming into yogi push up. Okay. And that will give you the same sensation of how it feels to engage here and here. And you're also drawing the belly in and up. So there's a, a firing up of this 
corset of strength in the center of your body already. Okay. Um, anyone who's feeling like their posture is off and you're someone who's been spending a lot of time rounding through the spine, spinning forwards, what can be quite nice for preparation here is coming into downward facing dog. And again, all of these tips are things that you can do kind of woven into the regular practice, the way you'll warm up anyhow. So it's not anything in addition, really. You can take the left hand to the outside of the right ankle or shin and you're drawing yourself through and under. And that gives you a nice amount of release through the thoracic spine, your upper back area, which is an area that is inherently tight for a lot of us, primarily because the ribs are there doing their job of protecting the lungs and the heart, right? Okay. So both directions for that. Those can be really nice ways to prepare for it. And then every time you're in a forward fold, how can I draw my belly in? How can I draw my belly up? So that engagement of Mula Banda and Uddiyana Banda. Um, and for some of that's come us, that comes naturally. Some of us, it takes a little practice. So every time you're in a forward fold, engage in that way. Draw your torso closer to the legs so that everything you're doing is repetition about trying to get torso closer to legs. Okay, and then trying to get inner thigh and back of the arm connecting. It's almost like when we come to the shape, we want to have our legs almost like backpack straps coming over our shoulders as close as we can anyway. All right. So when I talk about arm balances, um, regardless of which arm balance we're doing, I like to think about um, six foundations or six elements. And I'm always coming back to them as the reference point as I go through the practice. Okay. So the first one is the foundation of the hands. Um, and I say it every week. So those of you who've been joining, it's probably ingrained in here now, push down through the heel of the hand, push down through the knuckles. Okay. The meeting points of the fingers and the hand into the ground and then push down through the thumb, the fingertips as well. So then you've got a good amount of, of preparation through both hands um, and we're spreading the load then. So it's not going to dump into the wrists quite so much. Um, and hopefully what we're trying to get to is by engaging the right muscles in the rest of the body. Um, then once we come to the shapes, it's not just about wrist strength. It's not just about core strength. We're spreading the effort or the force throughout the muscles, throughout the tendons, throughout the, the joints. And that's what the practice of yoga is about anyway. Okay. Um, so six elements, and then I'm going to talk to you, to you about what needs to be strong when you're in the shape. So hands are the first one. Adduction. Adduction is where we're bringing the inner thighs, the femur bone in closer towards each other. So we're adducting. We're asking our inner thigh muscles to come in and grip onto the outside of our arms. Okay. When we're in a chaturanga almost to begin with. So we need to have that practice of engagement through the inner thighs. And some of you have practiced with me um, a couple of weeks ago, practicing a sun salutation or even just a chair pose with a block in between your thighs um, and seeing how that makes you move um, more in terms of listening to your body, listening to how you can possibly keep that block in place. And as soon as you drop the block, that's when you'll learn how to engage even more. Okay. So that's a really nice practice um, to think about and, and to prepare the body for. And once you practice that a few times, I feel like the muscles start to get a little better at switching on um, more intuitively. Okay. And we're reinforcing that connection between the, the muscles, the nerves and the brain. Um, and then third thing is core. So I'm always talking about drawing the belly in and up. And what I mean by that is really, can you please engage Mula Banda and Uddiyana? Um, but most people don't know what that is. So my connection is draw the belly in and then almost scoop it up. And that fires up the transverse abdominis, erectus abdominis. And it also then fires up the multifidus, the muscle on the back of the spine, um, supporting the back and it's helping us to sit upright. Okay, so rooting in, lifting up. Um, and then the direction of the spine. So we're trying to keep the spine long. So we want to keep space in between the vertebrae. Collarbone is as broad as we can. And then inevitably, when the legs come over the arms, there's a, a rounding of the upper back. Okay, so we want to be rounding a little bit here. And something that can be quite nice to prepare for that sensation of rounding is eagle arms. Okay, so you're broadening through the, the back. And that will be really nice. 
And let me just remind you, something I really like to do is actually at the beginning, interlace the fingers and push the hands away. That kind of draws the belly in and up like I was talking about for the arm balance and creates that nice curve through the back of the, the spine, separates the shoulder blades a little, just like we are asking in the pose. And then I lift the arms up. But instead of puffing the chest forward, my ribs are drawn in towards each other. So I'm kind of mimicking what's going to happen in the shape as well. And then still with ribs and belly strong, I interlace the fingers behind the back. So I'm just opening up the chest. And when I'm looking forward, I'm not looking like this. I'm almost drawing the chin into the chest. So I'm, or into the back of my head. So it's a bit of a double chin thing. And then that gives us a bit more strength here and here. Okay. So anyway, let's go back through those things. Number one is hands. Number two is squeezing in a thighs or a deduction. Number three is the belly drawing in and up. Number four is that ability to have a nice long straight spine. And then at the last moment when you need it, that gentle rounding of the upper back. In crow pose, the fifth thing is leaning forward. You'll see in this shape where actually the fifth element is leaning backwards. Um, so we have to kind of prepare our minds a little bit for that. Um, and then once you're in the shape, with this one, it's a kind of leaning back and lifting the feet and then the action, the sixth element is, is what's going to happen with the feet. So it's a little bit of talking to your mind, a little bit of talking to your body, um, and then a little bit of switching off thinking. Because I always think when we think too much, that's when we stop ourselves from doing things, okay? So things that need to be strong in the shape, um, belly, obviously, um, that corset of power around the core. Um, inner thighs, we've stretched them to begin with to be able to easily get into the forward fold um, with the legs open. But we're going, to be, we're going to be really engaging inner thighs in the shape itself. So we want to be used to firing those muscles up um, as well. And then hands. It's not really a strength with the hands, but a, a broadening of the hands. Okay. So let me show you um, how we get into it. Um, in a standard way and then I'm going to talk you through some simpler ways to get into it and then talk to you about what comes next okay um, I'm just going to check in if anyone has any questions that you would in particular like me to to cover um, once I've got through some of this stuff just type it into the messages and I'll be really happy to to come back to that okay so let me just have a check and see if anyone has anything now you guys are good all right Okay, perfect. Let's get going then. So I'm going to use, um, actually I'll put the blocks aside for the moment. So I'm going to come into the shape as it is. And I'm starting in Melasna. And I didn't really list this as a nice starting point um, before as a way to warm the body up. But it's perfect. It's the perfect one. Um, because you can practice just simply opening the hips up by using the arms to push the knees away from each other. But you can also then practice engaging the inner thigh and trying to really push that into the back of the arm, right? So you can be sitting up nice and tall, just opening the groin. And then you can be activating, practicing engaging the adductor muscles here as well. So that's a nice start point. So I'm going to really get in nice and close. So it's almost like my legs are hugging into my rib cage here. And I might practice squeezing there just to see how that feels. And then I'm going to extend my hips up. Okay, so still the same thing to begin with. Hands, rather than coming in line with my feet, I'm trying to walk my hands back behind me. Now, I'm not going to get the whole of my hand flat to the ground until I start to almost lean backwards. So this is where the trust part comes in. So this is where you have to switch off the mind and just kind of go with it. Okay. And this is where a lot of people need blocks under the hand. So I'll show you that version in a moment. So I'm on this part of my hand, the fingers, the first part of my hand here. And as I lean back, the whole of my hand is going to come down to the ground. So don't worry too much about that at the moment. So I'm squeezing in, lifting my, my bum, putting my fingers down, putting my knuckles down. And then I'm leaning back. See how I, I tilt? I go from here to here. And I want you, if you're nervous, to practice that. Being okay with looking behind you and then looking down and forward because that's what's got to happen, okay? So that's a nice way to overcome the fear of falling backwards. So let me go again. Fingers down, fingers are behind the feet, sinking back, and then 
that upper arm becomes a shelf for my inner thighs and back of the thighs. So here I am, I'm resting, I'm squeezing inner thighs in, my belly's drawn in and up. And now I'm walking my feet in closer towards me, okay? First step might be that you're just lifting the feet up. I personally like to flex them, it gives me a bit more control, okay? So that can be step one, um, working with just lifting the feet. And then if that feels comfortable, you're doing the same setup, leaning back, feet come in together. And second, set, second step might be bringing the soles of the feet together. Okay, so like a bound angle, but on your hands. And now I feel like different parts of my hands start to lift up. As long as I feel stable and I'm spreading through most of the hand, that's okay, like a cupping effect. So I'm squeezing feet together. Okay, so that's another, another option. And then the actual shape. So fingers behind the feet, knuckles down, hands down, leaning back, legs connecting to arms, lifting feet, and then I'm squeezing inner thighs in, and I'm hooking the feet around each other, okay? And then trying to straighten out the arms a little. And if it doesn't work in one direction, try for the second direction. For the longest time, I felt like I could only do this in one direction, okay? So be okay with that. So then unhooking, falling down, falling down or landing gracefully, okay? I like to think that we have this padding um, on our bottoms for a reason, for arm balances that go backwards. So you see the difference between going forwards with crow. Um, so the fear is, is falling forwards. This way, we're just gonna fall back. And worse that's gonna happen is you'll land on your bottom, okay? So I'm going to show you it with blocks because I actually quite like this. And when I'm using blocks, I can't put my hand on the block. What I like to do is put the fingers to face downward on the side of the block. And then I'm bending and placing the palm of the hand onto the top of the block, okay? So it's like this. I see a lot of people also making the mistake of fingers facing in the opposite direction to toes, but everything's facing forwards, okay? If you're using the block though, fingers go down and the top of the hand is on the block. So let me show you with this and hopefully you can see easily the angle. So I've set the blocks up just behind me here. I'm in a malasana or a high malasana and I'm lifting my bum, fingers down on the block so I can push them back a little and as I lean back, palms of the hands come down. I've got a bend in the elbows and I'm resting the back of my thigh, femur onto the back of my arms and I'm squeezing inner thighs into my arms. And then I'm lifting the feet, flexing. And I'm squeezing the feet towards each other, squeezing inner thighs. And then I've hooked my toes around, okay? Remember there's the option in between to just bring soles of the feet to touch, okay? And then bringing it back down. So, how can we access that in a lighter way? Um, I saw a really cool version of this with a girl in class recently, and um, she actually set her blocks up for her bottom to sit on. So let me show you how that looked. It was kind of cool. So she sat on the blocks. She came into her position like this, and she leaned forwards like this, the belly was engaged, all of the same elements were in place. And then she leaned back and she put her hands nice and wide um, towards the blocks, okay? And she shuffled the legs in over her arms. And then sitting on the block, she started to do the same thing and she lifted the feet up and she was practicing this, okay? And, and she, the blocks tilted a little, just as mine are on the ground now. But this was really nice because she's, setting up all of the foundations without um, having to hurt the wrists and without actually having the fear of falling. So it's a nice muscle memory trick. So this was a pretty nice thing that I saw as well. Um, <clears throat> so that's a really nice way to practice it. I don't have a chair here to show you, um, but something that I have also um, been taught is having the blocks in front of you. I'm gonna kind of create an imaginary chair. And um, you're sitting on the chair, okay? It looks like, looks like this. And the person is practicing putting their hands onto the block. So bottom on the chair, hands on the block. And then I can't do it because I don't actually have a chair here. 
but they're wrapping the legs around and hooking. So again, it's minus the core lift off. So it would, if I do a pretend one here, I wonder if I can. Maybe it looks a little bit like this. Your bottom's on the chair. And she was practicing lifting the feet like that, okay? Um, but obviously it's lighter on the wrists because you're not actually putting all of your weight into the hands there. So that's a nice option as well. So you can put blocks under your hands. You can um, put a chair under your bottom. You can put all manner of different ways of doing it, okay? You can come into it on the ground. Um, it doesn't really help you to have your feet on blocks because I tend to feel like if you do and then you go back, it's more of a, a falling backwards sensation. So I'm, I'm more, much more about having um, the blocks under the hands and actually that's more for wrist safety than anything, okay? Any questions about that so far? That's a lot of me going blah, 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 blah. Okay, let me just come in and check. <clears throat> cool, all right, so there's one more thing I'm just gonna show you. Um, and I want to show you it just as a, a, a thing of where you can go next with this, because I like to think of um, arm pressure pose as a pose that I talked about crow pose as being the foundation for a lot of the arm balances. I feel like arm pressure pose is the, the foundational arm balance pose for all of the kind of leaning backward ones. And you can actually then transition into poses that go between leaning back and leaning forwards. So there's lots of fun transitions that come from this as well. So let me show you what we're going to do next week. Um, and maybe that will um, excite you to come back and join me for the number four talk. Um, but this shape, once we've practiced it, this is a warm up often for, for firefly pose. Um, so same setup again, still sitting down into the hips and you're lifting the bottom and you're trying to get those arms as far under the legs as you can. Blocks go back, fingers down, hands down. Remember you don't have to use blocks. A lot of people will find that harder. And I'm sinking my hips back and down and I'm looking forward. So it's not forward like with crow pose where you're looking just a foot forward. This is really looking forward and then lifting the feet and squeezing the thighs in towards each other. Remember, this is the actual shape, cross of the ankles. What I'm gonna do now is flex my feet to give me the power and I'm squeezing inner thighs in and then I'm coming into pointy toes for the end of it with firefly pose, okay? So that's how you can progress the shape, okay? It's a, a different shape, but that's a progression from there. And obviously the legs can be a lot straighter than that. So I hope that that helps you a little bit. Um, watch this on video again. I'm gonna save it on the Instagram stories in the series, Wednesday's talks. Um, and it will also get saved on Facebook as well. So I'm really happy to have messages. You can send me private messages or you can comment here um, with any questions about how to play around and practice with this. And yeah, I'd love it if you, take any pictures of yourself practicing, tag me, send me a message and um, yeah, I look forward to seeing how you all go.